Papering over the cracks in my life. <laughs> Think you're gonna need a bigger brush. <laughs> what do you reckon to Hawaiian sunrise? Mm, I don't know. Well, it's difficult to tell on top of patterned wallpaper, isn't it? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, why do I suddenly fancy a can of tango? <laughs> Are you here for a reason? Yes, I'd like some rent. What happened to the water white fivers I got for you last week? Modern rent. Fivers with pictures of Elizabeth II on them. I've got a lot of expenses at the moment. Your wife's a millionaire. I can't keep going to Yvonne for handouts. I have my pride. You let her buy your Porsche. Yeah, no, I've got to find the money to run it. <laughs> I don't expect sympathy from a man in a paper suit. Plus, I've got a VE night party to pay for. All that Tesco finger food's going to put a nasty crimp in the gold <laughs> jar. So for you, Tommy, the fight is finally over, yeah? Oh, yes. It's been rough, it's been tough, but I think I can say I've played my part. And now peace is broken out. You won't be able to con fee without you're off on a secret mission every five minutes. Au contraire, mon brave. There won't be a week goes past without some convenient little conflict breaking out somewhere. First of all, I'll have to help finish off the Japs. That takes us until August, after which I'll organise the Berlin airlift. Then there's Korea, the Mau Mau uprising in Kenya, Communist insurgency in Malaysia. You know, even after all this time, I'm still dumbfounded by your devious resourcefulness. <laughs> to any other citizen, that is a litany of international cataclysms. To you, it's just a convenient way to go on shagging two women. <laughs> Good night and God bless. I think that's the best song you've ever written. <laughs> Even better than Karma Chameleon. Well, it's a toss-up, but the last waltz wins because I understand the words. Hmm. Fancy a little nightcap before we hit the road. Hmm, I won't mind a small port. Felix, though. <laughs> it's a small port. Oh. <laughs> I beg your pardon, I didn't mean to intrude. That's all right. Would you care for a Felix Stowe, Kimmy? Well, that's very decent of you, Mrs Sparrow. <laughs> I was wondering if we should push all the tables up against the wall. Oh, I'm getting a bit old for that sort of thing, Phoebe. I prefer a nice, comfy bed. <laughs> Get off. I mean so as we can fit more people in on VE night. It's got to be soon. And you, you know, it's a strange thing, war, Mrs Sparrow. You think it's all over? It is now. <laughs> Not necessarily. The Germans might suddenly rally like they did in the Battle of the Bulge. Mm -hmm, maybe. But my money's on May the 8th. Next week? You sure? You must have friends in high places. Oh, absolutely. Me and Lord Nelson, we're like that. <laughs> It'd be so wonderful to have you home for good. It's time we thought about a little sister for Michael. Yeah, well, hold on, Phoebe. I mean, the war may be over in Europe soon, but there's still Japan. Not to mention Korea. Korea? If you think you're making a career out of this secret agent life, you've got another thing coming. Look, we'll talk about it later. No, we will not talk about it later. Done your bit, that's an end to it. Mrs Sparrow's a lovely lady. Voice like a nightingale. Mm. Maybe I should change my name. <laughs> Have I got news for you? Word is, Mr Atley's going to perform the official reopening of our old boys club. Yeah. I should push the fall of Berlin off the front page. Do you reckon? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm ever so excited. Only Mr Atley helped set up the club back before the Great War. He personally taught me to play ping pong. Really? It's going to be a do and everything. Do you think he'll remember me? He probably keeps a picture of you by his bedside, Reg. Exactly. <laughs> Daft. Where would he have got a picture of me from? <laughs> you get off home, Mrs Farrow. We'll finish up here, won't we, Reg? Yeah, of course. You go off and get your beauty sleep, Phoebe. Not that you need much. 
You're not going to get much. Oh, Gavin. <laughs> you know, I'm a great admirer of Mr Ackley myself. I'd very much like the chance to shake the great man's hand. Mm. Do you think you'll be able to wangle some tickets to this little party? Oh, I should think so, with my police connections. And if you take your ping-pong back with you, perhaps Mr Ackley will give you a knock-up. <laughs> <laughs> What? Ron, Gary was in Wigan last night, wasn't he? If you say so. Oh, no. Or did he say Rippon? Did he? Yvonne, I'm a bit tied up at the moment. I've hired a stripper. What? It's only until midday, so I want to get my money's worth. <laughs> oh, you're disgusting. It's a wallpaper stripper, Yvonne. Oh. Is something wrong? There's been a car crash near Wigan. It's on the telly. There's a Porsche just like Gary's squash flats. I mean, what if it's him? Hi. Whoa. Oh. Hey, it's a nice welcome. What's up? I thought you'd been killed. Say again? A silver Porsche was hit head on by a truck near Wigan. Wigan? Well, you said you were going to Wigan. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 well, I, I did. But I'm fine. Car's fine. Everything's fine. Oh, it's such a shock. I thought I'd lost you. Oh, don't be daft. Well, I hope the trip was worth it. A few Lancashire light fusilier cat badges and a wartime tin of whale meat. <laughs> no fancy sandwich, do you? Oh. Still had a nice walk round. Went for a stroll on Wigan Pier. You kidding? No. Wigan Pier? No. As immortalised by George Orwell. Wigan doesn't have a peer. That was the joke. <laughs> well, there's a peer there now. <laughs> it's, it's not much of a peer. More, more a sort of um, a jetty thing. A jetty? Yeah, well, you know, jetty, wharf, breakwater, dock thing. Which you went for a walk on. A walk alongside of? Yeah, look, what is this? Geography A-level? Are you sure you've been in Wigan? No, all right, I admit it. I haven't. I was lying. I went to Wigton, where I attended a Melvin Bragg convention, only I was too embarrassed to admit it. All right? <laughs> if you excuse me, I'm going for a shower. It gets very hot in that Porsche. Me. Can I have a lift? <laughs> Nearly made a major cock up there, Gary. This is about that Wigan Pier thing. I saw you. Where? At the shop. I saw you in the yard. Materialised, just like Doctor Who's phone box. <laughs> then you ran into the shop, ran out again and disappeared through the fence again. Well? 
I don't know what to say. What you've just said is impossible. I know it's impossible, but it's what I saw. <laughs> Yvonne, this is real life, OK? Not the X-Files. I can't walk into walls. Look, I'll show you. Look. See? <laughs> so, what is it? I'm going bonkers. Is that it? No, you... Probably a bit stressed out, yes. You know, what with selling the business, becoming a peer, then joining Blair's babes? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a week in a health farm. That's what you need. Don't you want to know why I was following you? <sighs> Not really. I was following you because I found this in your wallet. <laughs> were you with her when you were in Wigan? Is that it? Who is she, Gary? I don't know who she is. It's the only picture I've got at my granddad, and I know it's not my grandma. <laughs> Well, I managed to get three whopping brandies down her, so she's sleeping like a baby. What about when she wakes up in the morning? <sighs> well, with any luck, she'll realise that she can't have seen what she thought she saw. What she did see? Yeah, whatever. I think she sussed me, Ron. What am I going to do? Gary, how many times have we been here? Don't you think it's time you considered the groundbreaking option of doing the right thing by the people who love you? Tell the truth. Oh, yeah. Like, Yvonne, the reason you saw me vanish is that I travelled back to 1945, where I have a wife, a son, and a burgeoning reputation as a war hero. Or I could try. Phoebe, you know the reason I know so much about the war? It's because I'm an illegal immigrant from 1999. Is that the sort of thing you want? Think about it. And then you push that button there, and he jumps up and kicks the alien in the goobies. Goobies! <laughs> Did Michael just say what I thought he just said? No. Kick him in the goobies! <laughs> That's charming. <laughs> not say that in front of the baby, sitter. <laughs> How do I look? Lovely. New dress? Yeah. New in 1938. <laughs> <laughs> you OK? Yeah. Phoebe, I've got something to tell you. Something really... <sighs> Look, you're going to think this is incredible, but... What is it? You've got to promise me that you won't tell anyone else. And you must promise me that this won't change anything between us. What is it? Phoebe, I... Hitler's dead. <laughs> We were up all night at HQ arguing about when to break the story. He's really dead. It's really over. Yeah. He did himself in the night before last. <sighs> did you hear that, Michael? Nasty Mr. Hitler's dead. The war's gonna be over and we'll have Daddy back for good. Mr. Attlee was much taller last time I saw him. When was that? 1911. <laughs> and you were how old? Nine. Oh, yeah, right. Silly me. <laughs> Reg, are you tipsy? Tipsy? Take more than four double gins to get me drunk. I don't drink gin. Oh, no. It's what I told Kenneth. He said... What did you say? I said it isn't every day that Adolf Hitler dies. Right. Please welcome the Right Honourable... Clement Attlee, your local MP. It is a pleasure to be back here, in the East End, among old friends and comrades. I have fond memories of my life here, in the days before the Great War, although times then were hard. Indeed, I once wrote a poem about this place that means so much to me. I'll wager you're surprised. 
Clement Attlee had a romantic streak. Suffice to say, I was younger then. <laughs> I know this club will help produce the strong young workers of tomorrow to help us to construct a better Britain. Thank you. Mr. Attlee, Mr. Attlee, Reginald Deadman, do you remember? You taught me ping pong, March the 13th, 1911. Mop a curly ginger hair. It'd make my day if you'd honour me with a quick knock up. <laughs> Please. Uh, it will make a lovely picture, sir. Oh, very well. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm just, uh, get a drink. He was always a master of spin. We thought Peter Mandelson started it. <laughs> Wait! What on earth? Gary! Stop him, Reg! Why? Oh, for heaven's sake! <laughs> he was fiddling with your pipe. Cyanide, sir. Nothing to worry about. Just someone who's had a little too much to drink. Gary! Not me, Reg. <laughs> still, uh... Sparrow. Gary Sparrow. You probably saved my life. Thank you. My privilege, Mr. Atley. Not that I imagine I'll be much missed. Oh, I beg to differ. I think you'll be our next Prime Minister. The leader of a great reforming government. Well, I doubt whether the electorate would be so ungrateful as to turn Mr Churchill out of office after all he's done. Oh, you listen to my Gary, Mr Attlee. He's very rarely wrong about these things. <laughs> I'm sorry I lied, Yvonne, but there is another woman and I'm in love with her. I love you too, of course I do, but there's a little matter of my son. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's just shifted. I mustn't panic. No, it, it, it went away once before, remember? Just, just a question of waiting. <laughs> oh, my God. Sam? No. Why? Why is that? Can't move over. <laughs> You've been in the pub. Oh, I just had a couple of pints. Well, a couple for each year of the war. <laughs> Why are we sitting on a dustbin? I can't get back. Well, of course you can't. It's a code. It's a code. <laughs> it's a dead end. You've got to go down Duckett's Road into the Whitish Chapel Road. I mean, I'm stuck here forever. And I don't belong here, Reg. I am not from here. I have to come and go. I have another life. Responsibilities. Yvonne! Even what?
This is because I saved Etley. That's why I was sent back here in 93. And now I've fulfilled my destiny. So the time portal is closed. And I'm never going to see Yvonne, or Ron, or Baywatch ever again. <laughs> This is a pleasant surprise. Not for me. I want the truth. Where is Gary? I don't know. That is the truth. Liar. You must know. He always confides in you. He's been gone three days now and not a peep out of him. He has got another woman, hasn't he? Yvonne? You, you're barging here while, while I'm unwinding with... A life in the day of Julia Roberts. Get up. Shower. Don't shave. Ron, I've been doing the kickboxing class at the gym and I'm eager to practice on a large flabby scouse victim. Yvonne, I really think this is something for you and Gary to... Ah! <laughs> Ron, I hope you find this message. I'm stuck in the past. The time portal's vanished. Tell Yvonne I'm sorry. Tell her everything. Try to explain. Yeah, hold on. The, uh, the lock's playing up. Hurry up! Yeah, OK. Yeah, I think it's definitely broken, you know. I'll just get my screwdriver. Hurry up! <laughs> and Gary's been doing this for the past six years. He tried to tell you right at the beginning, but, well... So, the good news is I'm not going mad. I did see Gary vanish. And the bad news is that all the accepted laws of physics are crap. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Ron, you'll understand if I never want to see you again as long as I live. <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. I know it's VE night, but I'm suffering from a sense of anticlimax. I thought I had that once. Just turned out my underpants were too tight. I bought some mini Kievs. I don't think these are going to help, son. They're to eat, Reg. Mm. Oh, Lauren. They're nice. Where'd you get them from? I fast-forwarded to 1999 and popped into Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, would you tell Phoebe I'm just popping out for some fresh air? It's V night. I know. But in 1999, it's ER night. Huh? <laughs> Don't worry. It's any phase I'm going through. Oh. could be inches away and I'll never see you again. What are you doing here? I miss him too. Who says I miss him? Anyway, I'm not talking to you. No, I know. You're talking to someone who isn't there. He might be. He might be on the other side trying to get back. Yvonne, he can't. Anyway, it's VE Day. He's probably up west. An old coward and the gang. Rolling out the barrel, knees at Mother Brown in hokey cokey in. Oh, and that's supposed to make me feel better? No. But the point is, he's stuck there and you're stuck here. You're both going to just have to get on with your lives. I suppose so. Do you know, I wish I could 
pass through this time warp thing just once. I know. Give him such a slap. <laughs> <coughs> Do you think he really did love me? Still loves you. More than her? As much as her. Would you think she loves him as much as I do? Please, Yvonne, I... Well? You really do love Gary, don't you? Well, try not to sound so surprised. It's just... You've been so busy lately. Maybe he didn't realise. Perhaps you're right. Gary? I love you, I miss you, and I want you back. Of course, you can't hear me now, can you? What am I doing here? Not like Yvonne's going to be on the other side of the fence. <laughs> Talking to a brick wall. Not a bad metaphor for me, Yvonne. Who are you talking to? How did you get here? Rach saw you catching a taxi. I was worried. My ear of all places. I don't know. Something special about the East End. Like Mr. Atley said, this is the soul of London. I just love it here. And this is where you and I first met. No, it isn't. We met down the Royal Oak, not down some smelly alley. Yeah, well, there's a big knees up on at the Oak. I wasn't in the mood. Just thought I'd be on my own for a bit. Well, I don't want to be on my own anymore, Gary. I want us all to be together, like a proper family. Me too. Come here, you. You're not going to go away anymore, are you? No. This is where I belong now. Anyway, where is there to go? over the cracks in my life. <laughs> Think you're gonna need a bigger brush. <laughs> what do you reckon to Hawaiian sunrise? Mm, I don't know. Well, it's difficult to tell on top of patterned wallpaper, isn't it? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, why do I suddenly fancy a can of tango? <laughs> Are you here for a reason? Yes, I'd like some rent. What happened to the water white fivers I got for you last week? Modern rent. Fivers with pictures of Elizabeth II on them. I've got a lot of expenses at the moment. Your wife's a millionaire. I can't keep going to Yvonne for handouts. I have my pride. You let her buy your Porsche. Yeah, no, I've got to find the money to run it. <laughs> I don't expect sympathy from a man in a paper suit. Plus, I've got a VE night party to pay for. All that Tesco finger food's going to put a nasty crimp in the gold jar. <laughs> So for you, Tommy Zavar, it's finally over, yeah? Oh, yes. It's been rough, it's been tough, but I think I can say I've played my part. And now peace is broken out. You won't be able to con fee without you're off on a secret mission every five minutes. Au contraire, mon brave. There won't be a week goes past without some convenient little conflict breaking out somewhere. 
First of all, I'll have to help finish off the Japs. That takes us until August, after which I'll organise the Berlin airlift. Then there's Korea, the Mau Mau uprising in Kenya, communist insurgency in Malaysia. You know, even after all this time, I'm still dumbfounded by your devious resourcefulness. <laughs> to any other citizen, that is a litany of international cataclysms. To you, it's just a convenient way to go on shagging two women. <laughs> Good night and God bless. I think that's the best song you've ever written. <laughs> Even better than Karma Chameleon. Well, it's a toss-up, but the last waltz wins because I understand the words. Mm. Fancy a little nightcap before we hit the road. Mm, I won't mind a small port. Felix, though. <laughs> it's a small port. Oh. <laughs> I beg your pardon, I didn't mean to intrude. That's all right. Would you care for a Felix Stowe, Kimmy? Well, that's very decent of you, Mrs Sparrow. <laughs> I was wondering if we should push all the tables up against the wall. Oh, I'm getting a bit old for that sort of thing, Phoebe. I prefer a nice, comfy bed. <laughs> Get off. I mean so as we can fit more people in on VE night. It's got to be soon. And you, you know, it's a strange thing, war, Mrs Sparrow. You think it's all over? It is now. <laughs> no, not necessarily. The Germans might suddenly rally like they did in the Battle of the Bulge. Mm -hmm, maybe. But my money's on May the 8th. Next week? You sure? You must have friends in high places. Oh, absolutely. Me and Lord Nelson, we're like that. <laughs> It'd be so wonderful to have you home for good. It's time we thought about a little sister for Michael. Yeah, well, hold on, Phoebe. I mean, the war may be over in Europe soon, but there's still Japan. Not to mention Korea. Korea? If you think you're making a career out of this secret agent life, you've got another thing coming. Look, we'll talk about it later. No, we will not talk about it later. Done your bit, that's an end to it. Mrs Sparrow's a lovely lady. Voice like a nightingale. Mm. Maybe I should change my name. <laughs> Have I got news for you? Word is, Mr Atley's going to perform the official reopening of our old boys club. Yeah. I should push the fall of Berlin off the front page. Do you reckon? No. <laughs> I'm ever so excited. Only Mr Atley helped set up the club back before the Great War. He personally taught me to play ping pong. Really? It's going to be a do and everything. Do you think he'll remember me? He probably keeps a picture of you by his bedside, Reg. Exactly. <laughs> Daft. Where would he have got a picture of me from? <laughs> you get off home, Mrs Sparrow. We'll finish up here, won't we, Reg? Yeah, of course. You go off and get your beauty sleep, Phoebe. Not that you need much. You're not going to get much. Oh, <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> you know, I'm a great admirer of Mr Atley myself. I'd very much like the chance to shake the great man's hand. Mm. Do you think you'll be able to wangle some tickets to this little party? Oh, I should think so, with my police connections. And if you take your ping-pong back with you, perhaps Mr Atley will give you a knock-up. <laughs> <laughs> What? Ron, Gary was in Wigan last night, wasn't he? If you say so. Oh, no. Or did he say Rippon? Did he? Yvonne, I'm a bit tied up at the moment. I've hired a stripper. What? It's only until midday, so I want to get my money's worth. <laughs> oh, you're disgusting. It's a wallpaper stripper, Yvonne. Oh. Is something wrong? There's been a car crash near Wigan. It's on the telly. There's a Porsche just like Gary's squash flats. I mean, what if it's him? Hi. Whoa. Oh. Hey, it's a nice welcome. What's up? I thought you'd been killed. Say again? A silver Porsche was hit head on by a truck near Wigan. Wigan? Well, you said you were going to Wigan. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 well, I, I did. But I'm fine. Car's fine. Everything's fine. Oh, 
felt such a shock. I thought I'd lost you. Oh, well, don't be daft. Well, I hope the trip was worth it. A few Lancashire light fusilier cat badges and a wartime tin of whale meat. <laughs> no fancy sandwich, do you? Oh. Still had a nice walk round. Went for a stroll on Wigan Pier. You kidding? No. Wigan Pier? Yeah. As immortalised by George Orwell. Wigan doesn't have a pier. That was the joke. <laughs> well, there's a pier there now. <laughs> it's, it's not much of a pier. More, more a sort of um, a jetty thing. A jetty? Yeah, well, you know, jetty, wharf, breakwater, dock thing. Which you went for a walk on. A walk alongside of? Yeah, look, what is this? Geography A-level? Are you sure you've been in Wigan? No, all right, I admit it. I haven't. I was lying. I went to Wigton, where I attended a Melvin Bragg convention, only I was too embarrassed to admit it. All right? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going for a shower. It gets very hot in that Porsche. <laughs>